Hi guys, podcast 284 coming your way. Steve Smee here, Evolution at Org podcast with Rick. What's up, buddy? Hey, what's up, Steve? What's up, guys? This is podcast 284, and we're doing part two of testosterone, which we uh, had some technical difficulties and uh, ended up not, um, we ended up having to clip a lot of uh, sound out of that podcast. So this is going to be the replacement for that. Yeah, and that that podcast was number two seventy eight. If you guys want to go back, part one. So this is going to be part two, guys. So let's let's get into it, guys. First off, let's talk more about cycling ideas with testosterone. So I can tell you, the first time you know uh, you run a cycle, everyone always says you got to run five hundred milligrams of testosterone for a first cycle, and the reason they do that. Okay, it's not because testosterone is a weak steroid or a safe steroid or a mild steroid. It is a legitimately um, very, very harsh steroid, very, very suppressive on your body. It will shut you down very, very quickly. One of the most suppressive steroids out there. So don't think that just running it for a first cycle is somehow safe. So anytime you, you, you use any type of steroid, it's very, very serious business. But the reason they say, you know, hey, run 400, 500 milligrams for a first cycle is because it is both androgenic and anabolic. So you can just use it by itself and get a tremendous, tremendous results on a first cycle. So what we're going to talk about, though, first is cycling it with something else. That's called stacking. So I can say, first off, since it is anabolic and androgenic, you can cycle it with pretty much everything. Um, the, the thing is, though, if you start stacking estrogenic compounds that aromatize and you're running a lot of testosterone, that could give you a lot of estrogen issues. So you want to keep that in mind. So it really depends on your goals. There's a lot of yin and yang till stacking, guys. So let's get into it. Um, Rick, I'm going to let you in first. Um, give us some ideas for stacking. What are your favorite testosterone stacks? Testosterone stacks real well with pretty much everything, but uh, the classic, a really good one that I like is testosterone and EQ. Those two are my favorite stack. It's all I will ever use right now. And that's good enough for me, but my goals maybe aren't as lofty as some of these other younger guys listen in, or even some of the older guys, right? Uh, it goes well with everything. Deca, Dianabol, Deca, Dianabol, and testosterone, classic combination. Testosterone goes well with Turinabol. It goes well with Winstrol. It goes well with pretty much every steroid out there. There probably isn't one that I could say wouldn't it wouldn't do well with. Of at least not over the top of my head, unless you have something, Steve. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, good stacks. Uh, testosterone propionate, uh, tremble and acetate, and EQ. It's a really nice one. Uh, testosterone, parabolin. Uh, I'm sorry, I should say testosterone, primobolin, and maybe a little bit of Debo. That's a nice one as well. Primobolin and Debo with the test in there, that's really good. Um, and if you do, let's say something like testosterone masteron, it's actually a decent little combo as well. I like testosterone pretty much everything. I think I've done a couple of like oral only cycles and just a couple of test shots where I only did other steroids and didn't do tests. But I think for the most part, I've always had uh, just a testosterone dosage in, in, I'd say, most of my cycles um, ever because it, I just respond well to it. I don't have bad side effects from it. I feel like I, it works. I think my body handles it really well compared to other steroids. Uh, even at high, some of the higher doses, you know, I can do maybe a gram of test and won't get as many side effects as far as acne and, and pumps and things like that that I might get, let's say, on 40 megs a day of D-ball. You know, it's just my body responds real, real well to it. And the drugs that are out there were made for testosterone, not for the other steroids. They were made for testosterone. So when you take auxiliary drugs, when you take any of, of the drugs to inhibit the enzymes, the fiber reductase, the aromatase enzyme, when you take all these drugs there, they were meant and tested for use on people suffering with side effects from testosterone, uh, whether it be aromatization or conversion of DHT, uh, not for the other steroids. So there is, um, there's that as well. What I like to do with testosterone when I'm stacking it, guys, you can go to one of two ways. You can do the bulking route or the cutting route. Okay. Let's just keep it simple. Um, 
you know, on those topics. Let's say you want to bulk, you know, stat, use 400, four hundred, four, four, five hundred milligrams of testosterone, and you can kickstart it with some D bowl. Nothing wrong with that for a bulk. Another option too, you can throw in EQ. EQ, um, you can bulk with with EQ and the testosterone. So you do maybe let's say 200, 300 milligrams of testosterone, five, 600 milligrams of EQ. Boom, now you got a bulking steroid. Say you want to cut, do a low dose of testosterone, maybe a TRT dose, like 125, maybe 200 tops milligrams a week. And you can throw in some masterin in there. You can kickstart it with some T-Bowl, Anavar, or even Winstrol. Boom, now you got a nice cutting stack. So it's, it's very versatile, guys. It just depends on your situation. Let's say you want strength. Um, a lot of steroids are great for strength. We all know that. You can run testosterone with, four, let's say, four or 500 milligrams of testosterone. And you can run, uh, again, you can run EQ with it. Um, EQ would, would, would stack in really good. Give you a nice, nice mild little kick to that cycle. Maybe, you know, four or 500 milligrams of the EQ, four or five milligrams of the testosterone. That's a huge cycle. Let's say you want to um, run trend with um, testosterone. I'd run a small dosage of testosterone, say 125 milligrams a week of testosterone, and you can throw in 200 to 300 milligrams a week of the trend. Boom, now you got a nice strength cycle. And then you can throw in some T-Bowl or VAR with that. That'd be a nice um, cycle and won't give you too much side effects. There's all kinds of different ways to do it, guys. Really, there isn't any wrong answer. The only wrong answer, like I said when I started, I really don't like to see guys run a lot of aromatizing compounds and then run a lot of testosterone with it. So if you're running 500 or 1,000 milligrams of testosterone and you're throwing in 50 milligrams of D-Ball and you're throwing in DECA, and you're throwing in a bunch of aromatizing compounds, it's not a good idea, guys, because you're just going to blow it up. You're just going to put on like you know 20 pounds of just fat and water. And I just don't see the point in doing that. Now, if you want to get a nice bodybuilding cycle, then you can do testosterone with Primo. I like five, 600 milligrams of Primo and then a low dose of testosterone. Let the Primo do the work and you can stack in some VAR if you want an oral. So there's all kinds of ways, guys. And uh, yep. yeah, th doses matter. Uh, you just mentioned uh, Debo, Deca, and, and testosterone. That's a classic cycle, but the doses matter. If you keep them low, you won't have any real issues with the bloating and some of these other stuff if you make sure to keep your doses low. Also, um, as far as testosterone goes, you can get pretty far with just like, you just need testosterone, good quality aromas, and make sure it's legit, and some stinging nettle root. Uh, the, the aromas in obviously to keep um, your estrogen low so you don't have uh, estrogen issues and you're also not wasting a bunch of testosterone that becomes estrogen in your body and doesn't do what you want it to do. Also, stinging nettle root extract. It helps uh, raise your free testosterone levels. If you have good legitimate tests, good legitimate aromacin, and uh, good uh, high quality stinging nettle uh, root extract, like the one we put in H in N2, like the one we put in N2 Generate, uh, you get you can get pretty far uh, in how you change your physique on it on just testosterone alone. The only danger is, like I said, just keeping that conversion um, for, to estrogen from happening. And you know, if you start to have some issues from from DHT conversion, and I probably wouldn't go right ahead and try to kill the DHT right away. Um, I would most likely just try to lower dose a little bit until uh, they were they were in a way that were manageable. All right, guys. So let's get into the next topic on uh, testosterone. Um, Rick mentioned drugs, um, some drugs, and he pretty much hit the nail on the head. I'm a really big advocate of the N2Gar wire on cycle, no matter what you're running. And then um, I'm a really big fan of aromasin. A lot of guys ask me, you know, what's the best aromatized inhibitor? Aromasin is the most modern one. It's a suicide aromatized inhibitor. That means it will disable the, the, the estrogen enzyme permanently so you don't get a rebound. Um, so it's, it's also uh, going to boost your IGF-1. It won't suppress your IGF-1 uh, like some other AIs. So I don't recommend using the, the harsher AIs like Letro. You don't want to use Letro on cycle. Aromasin is the one to go with guys and you can you can run blood work to kind of to balance out your estrogen levels so you know where it's at you don't want your estrogen levels too high but you also don't want it too low when you're on cycle so blood work is key and a lot of guys want to know what to you know how much aromasin you want to run 
Um, you know what, guys, it depends on how much testosterone you're running and also what you're stacking. But let's say you're running 500 milligrams of testosterone. You can start with 12.5 milligrams of aromasin every other day or every third day and run blood work and adjust your dosage from there. So everyone's going to be a little different on that. So blood work is the key, guys. You can go on evolution.org forums. And in my signature, there is a link where you can get blood work for like 60 bucks. So there's no excuse why you should not get blood work. Rick, any, any other um, advice on that? Uh, yeah, look, I tell guys all the time, try to get your testosterone from your doctor if you can. It's real easy to get a script. Just find a good doctor, find a good clinic, and get it from a doc. Get legitimate human-grade testosterone. There's really nothing like it. And you'd be sparing yourself a lot of trouble in the future, I think. I I really think a lot of this underground lab stuff is highly toxic, man. It's got heavy metals. It's not, it's not tested for any of these things. So try to get your testosterone from your doctor. Um, and that's, you know, that's my best advice for most of you guys out there. Which doctor should guys be going to? A urologist, an endocrinologist? You want to, you want to find a rejuvenation clinic. Those are the specialists. They know what, they know what you're contacting them for. You know, if you go and try to talk your family doctor into it, good luck. But if you link up with a clinic, uh, you'll be you'll be fine. Try to find a, a clinic in your area. If you need to maybe take a trip, road trip or airplane trip uh, out of state to go see a doctor in person out of state that can prescribe. That's probably what you need to do. But yeah, just go to a, a rejuvenation clinic. That's all about what you're looking for. And they'll have other real interesting items that they can prescribe as well on top of the testosterone to help you reach your goals. You know, they can do growth hormone. They can do a lot of different things. It depends on your particular situation and who you link up with. All right, guys. So if you do buy uh, testosterone underground, the nice thing about testosterone, unlike other steroids, is it's very easy to find out if it's legitimate. All you need to do is run blood work. Again, to check my signature on evolution.org, you can run blood work for 60 bucks, okay? And so what you're going to do um, is you're going to look for where your testosterone levels are. Now, the normal level for males is somewhere between 250 and 950 nanograms per deciliter. So when you're running testosterone, I would say about 125 milligrams a week of testosterone should put you somewhere around uh, 600 area, 600, 650. 150 milligrams will put you in the 800s and so on. So um, you should definitely be able to figure out if your stuff is legitimate. Let's say if you're running 500 milligrams of testosterone a week, that should put your blood work in the 3000s, okay, if you get an uncapped type of version. Now, when you run blood work, you want to keep in mind most, most of the time it's going to be capped at 1500. So there'll be like a little arrow showing more than 1500. So you want to make sure you get the uncapped version if you're running a lot of testosterone and you want to see if it's legitimate. But at the end of the day, guys, that's, that's what you want to look for. Um, it's very, very easy to figure out if it's legitimate or not. You can't go by how you feel. You can't go by some of these, um, la these kits that will test uh, steroids. A lot of the kits themselves are not even accurate. So your best thing is blood work, guys. It's very, very, um, very accurate to, to figure out. And, um, you know, if you do buy it, again, underground, testosterone is one of the cheaper steroids. It's actually super, super cheap to, uh, for these companies, for these underground labs to actually make. And they actually sell a vial of testosterone. I, I see, you know, vials go for somewhere between, depends on if it's a 10 milliliter or 20 milliliter, but you're talking, you know, between 40 and $90 between a 10 milliliter and a 20 milliliter. So it's very, very cheap and it's probably cost them a few bucks to even produce. So they're making a huge margin on testosterone. That's why you see a lot of uh, sources pushing for guys to use testosterone because they make such a big margin on it. They definitely want people buying up the testosterone unlike the other steroids, which are much more expensive to produce. And some, you know, sometimes these sources don't even make money selling these other steroids, but they make a fortune selling testosterone. Anything else to add, Rick? Yeah, when it comes to dollar per pound, testosterone is probably the cheapest way to go when it comes to steroids. 
you know, dollar per pound, testosterone is, yeah, it's the way to go, in my opinion, yeah. Let me ask you, through, through a doctor, if you get a TRT, how much would you be paying? Or if you get, you know, if you go through a doctor, though, he's only going to give you a TRT amount of testosterone. He's not going to give you 500 milligrams a week, correct? Absolutely not. Yeah, they're not going to give you that much. Yeah, so you still would have to get it. But, I mean, what, what, give us some, some economics behind getting on a TRT. What would be the economics behind it? How much would it cost for everything? It, it depends on your state. It depends on who you go to. Some have a higher, um, a higher fee up front. Some don't. Uh, you have to, uh, you know, some stuff can be covered by insurance. Some won't. It's, it's definitely going to be more expensive than going black market. But you have the security of not worrying about having illegal shit delivered to your door or having to carry illegal stuff. And it's legit. It's always legit. It's always good. So those are the, the real benefits to it. But prices can vary. Some places will want a couple hundred dollars up front. Some places will want five, six hundred dollars up front just for consultation. Uh, some places will have, you know, I've seen guys on as little as, as uh, 50 to 100 megs a week of testosterone, 100 megs every 10 days. And I've seen guys who got a script and they were doing 200 megs a week of, you know, legitimate human grade test with a script. I've seen it all over the place. It's, it's kind of at the doctor's discretion, but I've, I've seen, the, I've seen the, 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 the dosing and the pricing all over the place. I'd be hard pressed to recommend a specific place or, or give anybody a price range because it'll depend the state you go to. It'll depend if your insurance will cover some of it or not. Yeah, that's good advice. All right, guys. So, I mean, that pretty much sums it up, guys. Quick, quick podcast. We pretty much covered everything on testosterone. If you have further questions, feel free to hit us up on the forums. Steve Smee and Rick. All right, buddy. Have a good one, Steve. Have a good one, All guys. Right. Guys, this is the required legal disclaimer. We are only sharing our experience from years of steroid use. We are not doctors, and none of what we say should be regarded as medical advice. Always check with your doctor before taking any drugs or starting any training program.